Welcome to the second lesson on version 1 of the critical path algorithm. In this lesson, we'll apply version 1 of the critical path algorithm to create a priority list and then also create a schedule. So for review from the first lesson, here are the four steps for version 1 of the critical path algorithm. Step 1, we find the critical path. Step 2, the first task in the critical path gets added to the priority list. Step 3, we remove that task from the digraph. Step 4, we repeat the process, finding the new critical path with the revised digraph. So let's take a look at our example. To save some time, I've already listed the task in the correct order based upon the critical path algorithm, as well as the total time of the path given above in red, but let's take the time to verify this. Using the original digraph, the critical path starting at task three would be task three, task five, task nine to the end. Notice how the total time would be eight plus eight plus ten hours, which is twenty-six hours. No other path would be more than twenty-six hours, which is the reason why task three is first on the priority list. And now we're supposed to remove task three from the digraph and repeat the process. If we remove task three from the project, the path that takes the longest time now starts at task two. It would be from task two to task five to task nine to the end. Notice how the total time would be seven plus eight plus ten or twenty-five hours. Because this is a new critical path, we now remove task two from the digraph. Another new critical path starts at task one. The new critical path would be from task one to task five to task nine to the end, with a total time of six plus eight plus ten, or twenty-four hours. So now we add task one to the priority list, and now remove task one from the digraph. And now we find the new critical path using this digraph. Notice if we start at task five, we can have a path that goes from task five to task nine to the end that has a total wait of eighteen hours. No other path has a time greater than eighteen hours, therefore this is the new critical path. We add task five to the priority list and now remove task five from the digraph. And now we find the critical path for this digraph. Notice how if we start at task four, we go from task four to task seven to the end, the total time is fifteen hours. No other path is more than fifteen hours, so this is the new critical path, and therefore we now add task four to the priority list, and then remove task four from the digraph. Once again, we're looking for the new critical path. If we take a look at task six, if we go from task six to eight to the end, the total time would be seven plus four or eleven hours. No other path takes longer, therefore this is a new critical path, we add task six to the priority list, and now remove task six from the digraph. And these last three are pretty straightforward. The longest path would be from task nine at ten hours. Then notice that task seven and eight have the same time of four hours. So typically we list the task with the lowest number first, so we list task seven and then task eight. So here's our priority list based upon the critical path algorithm. Now we return to the original digraph and create the schedule. So we first circle the ready tasks, which are tasks one, two, and three. Also circle them on the priority list, three, two, and one. And we have two processors, processor one and processor two. So we assign task three to the first ready processor, which is processor one. Notice task three takes eight hours. So now we mark task three as in progress. And now looking at the priority list, we'll assign task two to processor two. Task two takes seven hours. Task two is now in progress. Now notice at seven hours, task two is complete. So if task two is complete, notice how we do have one new ready task, Task four is now ready, so we'll circle that. But looking at the priority list, notice now task one will be assigned to processor two. 
Task one takes six hours, so seven plus six would be thirteen. And task one is in progress. Notice at time eight hours, task three is complete. So we'll mark task three is complete. Notice how when task three is complete, task six is now ready, but task five is still not ready because task five also requires task one to be complete. So we'll circle task six on the priority list. The highest priority ready task is task four, which will now be assigned to processor one. Task four takes 11 hours, so eight plus 11 is 19. Task four is now in progress. At time 13 hours, task one is complete. So if task one is complete, notice how now task five is ready. So we'll circle task five. And task five is the highest priority ready task. So task five is assigned to processor two. Task five takes eight hours. So 13 plus eight, that'd be 21. Task five is now in progress. At time 19 hours, task four is complete. When task four is complete, notice task seven is ready, but task eight is not because it also requires task six. So we'll circle task seven. The highest priority ready task is task six, which is now assigned to processor one. Task six takes seven hours, so 19 plus seven, that'd be 26. Task six is in progress. At time 21 hours, task five is complete. So task five is complete. Notice how now task nine is ready. So we'll circle task nine. The highest priority ready task is task nine. And therefore this will be assigned to processor two. Task nine takes 10 hours. So 21 plus 10 is 31. Task nine is now in progress. At time 26 hours, task six is complete. So task six is complete, which makes task eight ready. The highest priority ready task is task seven, which is assigned to processor one. Task seven takes four hours, 26 plus four is 30. Task seven is in progress. At time 30 hours, task seven is complete. And therefore, task eight, the remaining task, is assigned to processor one. Task eight takes four hours. 30 plus four is 34. Task eight is now in progress. Now that all the tasks have been assigned, the schedule is complete. But notice if we continue, after time 31 hours, task nine is complete. There are no more tasks to assign. After 34 hours, task eight is complete, and the project is complete. Notice how the total project takes 34 hours, and processor two is idle from 31 hours to 34 hours. And here's the same solution generated by a computer. This might be a little bit easier to read. Again, this was processor one and this was processor two. I hope you found this helpful.